nothing is done about climate change in the next three to five years. I'm not an angel of doom. <laughs> I will assure you that we will need air conditions to walk on the street. <laughs> because the trend that we are seeing suggests that the temperatures will keep increasing. Warming waters and plastic waste have contributed significantly to the depletion of fish stock in global waters. The situation is not any different in Ghana and artisanal fishermen are the ones suffering the brunt of this. According to the World Bank, about 25% of Ghana's potential catches may be lost to climate alone. How bad is the situation and what are some of the challenges of fishermen? We are here at the Jamestown Beach to find out from some fishermen and some fishmongers. Climate change appears to have created havoc and affected lives in many ways, but this has come to be as a result of human activities which have over time contributed largely to the emission of excessive greenhouse gases and increased volumes of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Over the years, the Earth has trapped a lot of heat which has translated to increased temperatures. Ghana's waters have been affected resultantly and at a rather massive rate. While small-scale fisheries and aquaculture barely have contributed to climate change, that sector has now become one of the biggest victims of climate change. Fish, which serves as protein for many in Ghana, is gradually being depleted in Ghana's water owing to migration and some species are becoming extinct gradually. Why has this come to be and how badly is it impacting on fisher folk in Ghana? Sometimes you go to the sea, the sea is very cool, so the species in the sea cannot be in the deep of the sea, so they come to the surface of the sea, then we can be able to make the catch from them. So normally when we go to the sea, when the sea is very cool, we made the catch. But for now, due to the climate change, the sea has also changed to become hot. So all these fishes and the species used to go down the sea. So when you go there, it takes us a lot before we made the catch. Somewhere in the 70s, when you go to fish in the 75 and then the 80s, when you go to the sea, you can see the during the uh, seasonal time, we call it Obue in our Ghana language. When you go there, you see the herrings and then the simons and then all these species around. They are in order. Whatever you prefer, you go for it and then made your cast, made your cast and then catch your fish and then you go away. But for now, when we go, the, sea, the species are in deep, so we bow down our head, deep, looking down the sea to search for all these species before we made a cast. See, and difference happen. Difference happen. We say, we put no assassin on here. See, see, we put no assassin. First, we have to go to the Hunam no wa esuro. We have to go to the Hunam na pa ansan na yato neti no. And they are quite nominal for you who be near at all netting. There are what then a bear fine. Only eight to me are quite in them. Now, what then a year basabasa? And you will nominal call when you be. Oh, nan, yes, honesty. Now, Saturday, no more, a couple of nine yanam. Say a couple, I caught three days. A committee of a corner, I want to see. I caught three days, now about three days, every three days, four days, now I call by a dinam. We are watching them. Saturday, Nami Papa, one Papa Munamu couple, now your best one. Bene bon lo homo, no me show me your juba, no me cut the wag be all low. Befe, bene will ever check when I can have a far wag be all low juba, then check I say, O be a me, Tomonica be a mini, Martis Cone, Abana, 
kan kan ba ni ji ma dum lo ah hun ke si be ni abanan ma fan lo ni ke bi ami ni fe ni won je ali lo agbe lo so ti ah wo ah hun da lo ba so ba bote obu emi de nche si ke je afi ko ma yun ko ba si bi ani si wo ta ni mi so mi lo te se ana an expert and lecturer at the Department of Marine and Fishery Sciences at the University of Ghana, Legon, Dr. Andrews Ajakumhene, explained that extreme temperatures in the atmosphere is making the conditions in the sea inconvenient for fishes, leading to migration. The climate is changing, as most of us are aware, and the driving force or the number one culprit is the fact that we are introducing a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Uh, carbon dioxide is coming about through the atmosphere as a result of man's activity, like the release of fossil fuel. Now there are gases in the atmosphere called greenhouse gases. Their main role is to trap this heat and make life on Earth bearable. It is important because that heat helps plants to photosynthesize. It helps us to even dry our clothes when. So the point is that it is a fact that the climate is increasing, it's changing, sorry. One of the key effects of climate change, as we know, is increasing temperatures. And that is where the impact on the marine system comes in. Every organism, including man, have a temperature range within which we are most active. And that is true for animals also in the ocean. Now with the changing climate, this temperature range has been exceeded. We are having temperature extremes and that is making life in the ocean unbearable. Imagine you in a car with the windows rolled up and the sun at its hottest best. You can imagine how uncomfortable you are. So first of all, animals in the marine environment are very uncomfortable because of this increase in temperature. For fish, they can be stressed. Every animal can be stressed, just like human beings can also be stressed. So when the temperatures are high, the first thing that sets in is that the animals are stressed, including fish. Now, every animal also lives in a habitat. A habitat is just an area where the animal operates best. When the temperatures increase to a certain range, these habitats begin to be impacted. And once a habitat is impacted, two things will have to happen. The animal will have to move and find a comfortable area to live or they die off. So one of the other impacts of climate change on marine life is migration. They either move from the area or they die. And that is why now we don't have a lot of fish in our system than it used to be. I always discuss with fishermen and I ask them, is it possible that the surface waters are too hot for your fish? And so they have gone into deeper waters where your nets cannot get to. Mm -hmm. Because we have other vessels coming and they get the fish all right. So how come our local fishermen are not getting? The waters are hot and the fishes have gone deeper. Aside from this, he said climate change has contributed largely to the bleaching of coral reefs and fish food, which disturbs the ecosystem of the sea and in turn impacts on marine life. In the marine environment called coral reefs, coral reefs are one of the most biodiverse ecosystems because they provide habitat for several and different species of animals, including fish. All the ornamental fish you see in aquaria come from the coral reefs. Now, whenever the marine environment is heated up, these coral uh, reefs bleach. And it's, the bleaching is just that they give out their color. There's an organism in there called zooxanthellae. When it's heated up, it expels the color and the coral becomes white. So you see the coral as bleached, that's the scientific term, coral bleaching. When this happens, that ecosystem is not conducive again for any marine animal at all. Um, the climate is affecting the food for the fish. Some of the fish feeds on, um, we call them zooplanktons and phytoplankton. they are microscopic organisms. Mm -hmm. They are driven by temperature. 
if the water is too hot these organisms will just leave the area and like humans uh, i always use humans as reference to make it easy to associate with every animal also move with food water so where the food is that is where the animals will go so if these phytoplanktons are moving as a result of temperature then the fish is going to follow and so if they were in area a now the temperature is hot they will move to area b and if we can't get there then they become inaccessible to us dr jacob Hene also noted that climate change is one of the reasons rare species sometimes die and are washed ashore in ghana's waters basic uh, physics or let me say elementary science told us that um, water when it's heated can hold less oxygen than when water is colder in the same way turbulent water can also get more oxygen than when it's calmer so there are some dynamics mm -hmm. if we are saying that climate is heating the water it stands to think that the oxygen content might also be going down and so it can cause the fish to be stressed up the fish and then the dolphins that were washed ashore in ghana recently uh, my department marine and fishery science we put some scientists on it i was part of the team and we came out clearly that the animals were just stressed. Okay. There were no the heavy metals, no pollutants that were affecting them. It was just stress from the environment. The oxygen level had gone down. Mm -hmm. At the same time, somewhere in the developed countries, they saw a dead pool. When we say dead pool, it's a layer of the sea where the oxygen content is so low that no organism can survive there. We saw a dead pool like that migrating through disease so when the animals are stressed some of these happenings or events will occur at the jamestown beach fishers noted how plastic waste has affected them So what is the way forward? Dr. Jekum Hene highlighted some very important ways climate change can be remedied and how to stop the menace of plastic waste in Ghana. If nothing is done about climate change in the next three to five years, I'm not an angel of doom. <laughs> I will assure you that we will need air conditions to walk on the street <laughs> because the trend that we are seeing suggests that the temperatures will keep increasing. That's why the research conducted shows that by 2050, there will be more plastic in the marine environment than fish. So I tell my students that we should try to start developing digestive system that can digest fish. Because very soon you buy kinky two CDs and you have to buy plastic three CDs yeah. because there will be no fish for you to eat with. But that is how bad the situation is. Few interventions can help with climate change. One of it is awareness. If people are aware of what brings carbon dioxide into the environment, maybe we get some of them stopping it. If people are aware of how they can, in their daily activities, help to prevent or remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, maybe they can help. And then um, if I'm, I know that by planting a tree, I'm helping to clean the atmosphere of carbon dioxide, then we can plant trees. But again, we need policies. Everything seems to come down to policies because you can try to connect the dogs and you realize that policy needs to come in. If I'm planting a tree today, and my grandchild cannot sit under the shade because someone is going to cut it, mm -hmm. then I'm not doing anything. So we need policies that are going to make the environmental 
um, system well catered for. The my learned brothers, the uh, sorry, the lawyers will say that um, let the punishment uh, fit the crime. Mm -hmm. If someone is cutting a tree, what are we doing to the person? But here you see people felling the trees all over. So there's not even. I was speaking to a restoration company. I don't want to mention their name, and they told me that. We are supposed to plant trees, but we don't even have the encouragement because we know that tomorrow someone who didn't even take part will come and fell it. I know a lot of African countries that have banned the use of plastic. There are other countries that say we will not bound outright the use of plastics, but let us ban single-use plastics. But in Ghana, anything goes. We are using every type of plastics. And because it is also cheap and sometimes free, that is why we discard it easily. So if you use the plastic, let's put a value to it. You buy the plastic that you use. I was in um, Kigami's hometown, Rwanda. I bought corn. They put it in a paper bag for me. You can't send plastic into that country. Ghana can, we have a lot of examples to learn from by way of policy. If we had these policies in place, that would be a first step. And then we can look at how we can clean what is already there. So at this point, I'm going to buy some fish from our father Niyama. And he's going to tell me the difference between what it was before and what it is now. But I'm 50 CDs. I, but um, I can say 50 CDs and kind of now we could fish. And now 50 CDs and natural me different. First year, first the first time you come back, we better turn on fifty cities. But when you when you are with, say we need a fifty cities. So that time the niyamu boy need this. Say the niyamu boy, niyamu boy need it. Wow, I'm just say we better fifty cities. We need to match me. We need to know how much we need to give me. We need to match me. I'm not. I'm not. We need to know. 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 We before now, if I was buying 50 CDs fish, it would be the entire thing in the pan. But because they don't get fish now, this is the amount of fish I'm getting for 50 Ghana CDs. So this is... Um, 50 cities worth of fish and we have noticed the vast difference according to him what was and what is now so we know how dire the situation is in a few years to come if we do not deal with the issue of climate change we probably may not have any fish to buy my name is wanda amihegan reporting for ghana web tv